going to see if we can get that information into the hands of Todd Starnes. He will be all over that like white on rice. So, again, that's what we're working on. And uh, we heard from someone who called in and said, well, they tried to access it and got a message indicating there may be some sort of a virus on the uh, Southern Baptist Convention website. So that uh, obviously is a possibility, although I'm not sure you know, how that would work with blocking a website if there's what kind of mechanism would be in there to identify that this website is contaminated as you're going to it. So anyway, we will continue to monitor that. So again, we're, we're looking for help on this. If you're in a military installation, you've had an opportunity at, or at a government uh, workstation to simply try to access the Southern Baptist Convention website, sbc.net. We want to know what you find. Now, maybe you'll be just fine. Uh, but m- maybe this is only blocked in certain places. We don't know. Uh, let's grab that call from Davey, and, and that's we just want to take calls on that right now. We'll take calls on other things moving into the last segment, but just calls on this particular subject, maybe military hostility toward Christianity. We can broaden it a little bit. If you're aware of some military hostility toward Christianity, we would love to hear that. Let's go to Davey in Lawrence, Tennessee. Number is 888 by the way. Davey, Lawrence, Tennessee, what's on your mind? Hey, it's it's not Dave, it's J.D., but... Okay, hey, J.D. Hey, brother, I, that, you know, I've been a pastor in the Southern Baptist, that kind of, it shocks me a little bit to hear that, but then again, I guess, you know, for me, we should, probably shouldn't be real surprised, brother, because the Lord, he told us that these kind of things are going to begin to happen, and I just, you know... Well, you know, and, and, and the thing, Davey, or J.D., we're, uh, by the way, that's my son's name is J.D. What does J.D. stand for? Jimmy Dale. Okay, my son is Jonathan uh, David. Anyway, uh, anyway, J.D., uh, you know, we don't, we, we've got to get more information. We got a call from a lady in California yeah. who apparently is at a, I don't know if she's military or just government, but she said the SBC website is not blocked in California, so... We specifically want to hear from people that can sit down at a government computer, especially a military computer, and try to access sbc.net and give us uh, give us a call, give us some information. Also, you can contact us by email, focalpoint at afr.net, focalpoint, one word, at afr.net. We monitor that website or the that email address, email inbox, during oh, the program. So focalpoint at afr.net. Uh, and I guess, J.D., part of the concern I've got is that we this would fit with a pattern. Again, we got to get more information about this. Uh, but this fits with a pattern of military hostility to conservative Christianity. We already did that story not too long ago about this training material where they were classifying evangelical Christians and Roman Catholics as as domestic terror threats right there with Al-Qaeda. I mean, right on the same list. In fact, evangelical Christians were the first ones on the list as, as a threat to domestic uh, tranquility. So it's fitting with kind of a pattern uh, that is concerned. Well, listen, I appreciate that, J.D. Thanks for the call. Anything else you want to add? Yes, I was just, just going to say that, uh, and I, I, I'm not going to tell you where my son was, but he's, he's across overseas in the Middle East. Uh, but it, he went almost three months, brother without even having a weapon. And he said it was so leery, Dad, driving through these little towns uh, with, with these Muslims and these guys. Well, said, well, well J.D., hold, hold it. Now, what, he, he's in, he was in the military? He was in uniform? Yes. Why did he not have a weapon? Because they did not have the equipment over there. And he, what he said was, was they couldn't figure out who was going to, which government was going to pay for it, our government or that government. Oh, my gosh. So so we got guys in military uniforms. Yes, sir. In a place in the world that we know hates America. Yes, sir. Absolutely. And they're, dri- they're driving around with no ability to defend themselves, let alone carry out any sort of military no, orders that might come no, there. With. No equipment for three months. Wow. All right, J.D., listen, I appreciate the call. Uh, let's go to Daniel, Fort Hood, Texas. Uh, Daniel, welcome to Focal Point with Brian Fisher. What's on your mind? Oh, yeah, I was calling about uh, how I can't log on or I can't get on the AFR website from over here at Fort Hood, Texas. Really? Right. So what what happens when you try to go to AFR.net? What happens? It just uh, it shows a big error on the page, and, like, if the website's down or that you just can't log on to it, it's like one of the restricted websites. 
Really? Did you try sbc.net? No, I'm, I'm not, right now I'm not around any computer. Okay. Well, I, I, I'd, I'd like Daniel. If, and then when, when did you try to log on to AFR? When did that happen? Uh, today, this because uh, I had to take a few soldiers, and this happened at the library on post where a lot of soldiers, they, when they need to go print stuff, print stuff off and uh, take care of some of their military business on, um, online, that's, what, uh, that's where we send our soldiers. We send them to the library because there's an abundance of computers on there, but they're still connected to the... Now, uh, so, 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 so they're, they're kind of connected to the military network of computers is what you're saying because it's, it's the library on the base. Roger, they're still connected on it. Yeah, now, can... has, that ha- has that ever happened to you before where you've tried to log on to AFR and had it blocked? Uh, never, because I, because when I take my soldiers up there, I like, you know, I get on the AFR website quite often. Wow. But today you were locked out. Big error message. Wow. Well, Daniel, if you get back, if you get back to the, uh, library there, I would, I, I would ask you to try to log on to SBC, that's Southern Baptist Convention, sbc.net, and see if you get the same result that you got when you tried to log on to AFR's website. Now, was there any message there, Daniel, when you logged on and tried to access AFR.net, was there anything other than that error message that popped up, any explanation or anything like that? No, I, I, uh, I tried logging on from different computers, and it just kept popping up the same message, error. Same error, deal. Error. All right. Well, listen, I appreciate it, Daniel. And if you, uh, you, you, you try to do the SBC.net thing and you get locked out, uh, email us at focalpoint at AFR.net. We may not be able to get to it till tomorrow. But uh, email us at focal point at AFR.net. All right, thanks, Daniel. Let's go to, to somebody in Biloxi who wants to remain anonymous. Welcome to Focal Point with Ryan Fisher. What's on your mind? Hi, I'm calling in reference to the uh, Southern Baptist Convention website. Yes, yes, sir. I'm an active duty Marine Corps operating on a Navy uh, um, system. Uh-huh. And I was able to get on to SBC.net. So, so far... At least uh, through the Navy, it's not been blocked. So no problem. No um, problem. Now, are you are you at a computer right now? No, I had to walk out of my office. Ah, my got it, got there. it. Well, you know, when you get back in there, um, and you get you get a minute where you got a break or something like that, uh, uh, try to log on to AFR.net. That's our website. We had somebody calling from Fort Hood saying they were blocked. They were, they were locked out of AFR.net. So give I that access, a, I have access to that because I was trying to get on there to send you guys an email, but I couldn't find out where. So I okay, so you were able it. to get on our website. All right, so at least down in Biloxi, that's not being blocked. Correct. All right, well, listen, I appreciate that call very, very much. That is helpful information to have. So anyway, that's what we're pursuing. That's kind of breaking news. Now, um, we want to get into some other things here um, today. So uh, if you'd like to weigh in on this general issue of of – the military's stance toward Christianity, uh, we'd love to hear that. We've got crosses being taken off of chapels in Afghanistan so we don't offend uh, the uh, locals. Uh, We have the military at a a veterans cemetery in Houston saying you cannot offer prayers in Jesus' name at these funerals. Uh, So we just got abundant examples of this kind of constriction of religious liberty in the United States military. So if you have a comment on that, uh, we'll take calls on that as we move toward the top of the hour. 888-589-8840 is the uh, number to call. 888-589-8840. Now, um, Todd Starnes had this story yesterday uh, as another example. And we actually brought you this story some time ago. It first surfaced a number of months ago. So this is not new to you that have been listening to us for that time. But the United States Army is directing troops to remove a Bible inscription that a vendor had etched into the serial numbers of weapons scopes. These are scopes that are attached to military rifles. And now the mil- and they had Bible references, John 8, 12, and 2 Corinthians 4, 6, abbreviated JN 8, colon 12, and two core four colon six were, were etched. Uh, I mean, like like the serial number stamped on a gun, they were etched into the sides of these scopes. Soldiers at Fort Wainwright in Alaska told Fox News they received a directive 
to turn in their scopes so the Bible references could be removed. And here was the direction from the military to these soldiers, the biblical verse, John 8, 12, must be removed utilizing a dremel. I don't know what that is, D-R-E-M-E-L, a dremel, 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 I don't know how you say it, utilizing a dremel-type tool and then painted black. After the letters and numbers were scraped off, soldiers were directed to apply black paint to ensure the verses were totally covered. Now, this story broke, I think, for the first time back in 2010, and a company spokesman told ABC at that time that the inscriptions had always been on the sites. And, of course, there's nothing wrong. There's nothing illegal about this. It's been done for years. First thing that George Washington did, the first thing that George Washington did when he was appointed commander of the Continental Army is he appointed chaplains, Christian chaplains, to pray in the name of Jesus Christ, to read the scriptures, and to conduct divine service. He issued orders on Sundays to his officers and soldiers to attend divine service. That was an order. It wasn't an option. It was an order from our first commander-in-chief. You will attend divine service this Sunday unless you've got to be on post or on uh, guard. Now, one of the Fort Wainwright soldiers who received the order said that hardly anyone was even aware of the religious reference. Blows my mind, the soldier said. It doesn't help the Army do its mission to take off a biblical reference. And, man, they want it, they want it removed. I mean, they want it obliterated. Uh, they, want the serial, they want those Bible references completely ground off the scope like people that are trying to grind the serial numbers off a gun or grind off the VIN number on a car and then paint it black so it can't possibly uh, be discerned. Well, frankly, ladies and gentlemen, that is anti-Christian bias, prejudice. I mean, that virtually amounts to a hate crime against Christianity. Focal Point AFR Talk, back in two weeks.